Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at the studios of St. Stephen Church, SSC Live TV, for another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining us today as we unpack what I hope we can get into some small groups and discuss the issue of violence and the church's response to violence. We're looking at Psalm 11, which is a psalm about violence that has erupted in the community. And let's look at it. Look at Psalm 11 with me. In fact, uh, let's look at this time from the message translation. We're going to look at it from the message translation. We looked at New Living Translation. Let's look at the message translation. He says, I've already run for my dear life straight to the arms of God. Why is he running to God? Because there's violence. Violence, homicide. So why would I run away now when you say run to the mountain? So there are people who are telling this person who lives in a violent community, run from that community. I have a friend, a great pastor, great preacher now by the name of uh, uh, Bruce Williams. F. Bruce Williams. Pharaoh uh, Bruce Williams. And uh, he is just a phenomenal preacher. But he pastors a church in one of the poorest zip codes in America. And uh, when his church building burnt down, there were people who said, you need to leave the community now because this is a community that has a lot of crime, a lot of violence, uh, a, a lot of homicides. And Dr. Williams told them, the very reason that you're telling me I need to leave is the very reason that I need to stay. I need to stay. And this writer is being told the same thing that Bruce Williams was told in verse 1. In verse 1, it says again, I've already run for, to dear, uh, for dear life straight to the arms of God. So why would I run away now when you say run to the mountains? The evil bows are bent. In other words, that's the weapon of choice. That's the, that's the, that's the handgun. And notice the bows are bent, which means the bow is loaded. You're talking about people packing with weapons that have bullets in the chamber. The wicked arrows aimed, the wicked arrows aimed to shoot under cover uh, of darkness at, stop here, at every heart open to God. Notice he talks about the weapons, the proliferation of guns are in those days, arrows. Everybody's got a gun. Everybody, just a proliferation of guns getting on the streets, aimed to shoot under cover the cover of darkness at every heart open to God. So there's drive by. Verse 3, the bottoms dropped out of the country. Good people don't have a chance. That's the cause of violence, not having a chance. Good people don't have a chance. But God hasn't moved to the mountains. Now, they were telling this person move to the mountains, but God is still in the hood, hallelujah, and has not moved to the mountains. His holy address hasn't changed. God is present in the midst of the violence. He is in charge as always, his eyes taking everything in, his eyelids unblinking, examining Adam's unruly brood inside and out, not stop here, missing a thing. I like that. That means that God is still involved and the church must be involved. Those who are saying to this man, you flee to the suburbs, flee to the mountains. He says, oh, I'm not going to do it. I've already fled to the arms of God, and I'm going to trust God. God wants me to do things. God has put me in the world as God's ambassador and representative to make a difference in the world that is filled with violence, filled with violence. What, a, what effect is violence having on our community, especially the black community? Here are 10 things that violence does to the black community. 10 things. Number one the loss of black men prior to entering the prime of life. Life is sacred. Life is sacred. And violence eliminates black men. One of the reasons we say amen at church is because we need to keep men in church. Violence takes them away from us. Two, the loss of productivity of the per perpetrator through incarceration. In other words, once the, the person who's perpetrated the violence has been caught, then we lose another brother to the prison system, which is nothing but slavery. Three, the criminalization of the black image, where the image is, is that black people are criminals. Four, the, emotion, the emotional scars it leaves on the family and friends of both victims and perpetrators. 
I can't tell you how many funerals as a minister I have preached just a year ago. In fact, last year, a little baby, who somebody shot into a house and killed a little baby, and I had to participate in the eulogy, the pain, the scars that it leaves upon the families and friends of the victims. Five, creates a tone of terrorism in the community. People are afraid. They're afraid. Six, fear and loss of faith in black youth. We don't have any confidence in our youth. We, we, we associate them, and, and it's not just, with violence. Six, isolation and economic disinvestment. I'm not going to put a business there in the community and let somebody kill me. So there's no economic investment. Eight, a police state. Now the police comes in, they start, uh, they start shooting up people like they did with Breonna Taylor here in my own city of Louisville. You have a police state because of violence. You have the violence because of the lack of opportunities. Nine, blame, shame. Blame, shame the black community. Well, black folk need to get themselves together when the problem is not black people. It is the unjust circumstances that black people have always been put in. Ten, and that is death becomes so routine that the city becomes desensitized to black death. In other words, you read it and it doesn't bother you anymore. That's just the abnormal becomes normal. You know, we talk about law and order. That was Trump's favorite phrase. We need law. We need order. Phrase is found in Psalms chapter 11. Psalm 11, Psalm uh, 11 says, uh, the, well, it shouldn't be chapters, just Psalm 11. The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows and the bowstrings they shoot from the shadows at those who are right. Uh, look at um, the, the, the message translation. Is it a message translation? One of the translations says uh, law and order. I forgot which one it says, but it uses the phrase law and order. And I want to explain what law and order often means. In many instances, it means this. The, the white system creates the laws, and then they, they order us the black community around, which means the black people don't have power and self-determination. There it is, the foundation. Thank you. Verse 3 says the foundations of law and order have collapsed. Somebody else makes the laws, and then they order us. And they order us to comply to laws that are not just and not in the best interest of our community. God is a God of justice, and God wants opportunities for all people. And only when the church gets involved to address the issue of violence can we really make a difference. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and bless our communities and help us to be proactive to make a difference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. Not only because of what the church can do for you, but what you can do with other believers in terms of your own spiritual development and making a difference in our world. If you don't have a church home, we'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a digital disciple, regardless of where you are in the country, to connect with us. Contact us, email us, newstart at sclive.org. Look, I pray you have a great day the rest of the day, and we'll pick up on this tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19 to stay safe and stay sane, and always remember that God is still in control. I'll see you tomorrow.